No, and nobody <clears throat> shouldn't be. All right, I'm going to wait until I get some subscribers. Okay, whoever's on here. Hey, Avon. Good morning. How are you doing? Hey, y'all. I see y'all get on here. ASAP, did I get on here? <clears throat> so, good morning, y'all. As you can see, I'm going to Panera. Hey, Art. Now, don't mind you if I um don't get to read any comments. So, I'm going to take you along while I drive to work. Good morning. Okay. As you can see, about taxes and the 1099 gig economy and why we should stay aware of what's going on within the government, especially when it comes to policy making. It's a good recap so far this week. Um, so far, in terms of Grubhub, everything's going well. It seems like I'm getting more offers, especially when, especially when you are um, on time. So I'm not making anything huge with Grubhub because I've only scheduled like two hour blocks, but. Um, I've started to notice that as your attendance rate goes up with Grubhub and your acceptance rate goes up and you could quickly, hey, Seattle Drive, uh, <clears throat> that I'm getting more offers, but that all depends on, you know, your speed. But I'm still getting, um, I'm not getting any huge offers especially during the week. But anyway, so, and I didn't get, let me see. Yeah, did you get my email? Because I didn't get any email from you about what we talked about. So tell me, tell me, let me know what you decide to do. Because I sent you an email and I didn't hear anything back. And I left you my number. So let me know what you want to do in regards to taxes. But anyway, so let me go over um, some of the things that I've been following because I recently resubscribed to my Sirius radio, and <clears throat> I like to listen to different, um, particularly those um, progressive and those right wing Republicans side. You know, you know, like the Rush Limbaugh. Um, commentators both sides and also the political and other political things that goes on now as i was listening to the changes that congress is proposing well not congress so much trump about raising the gas tax to 25 cents now some of y'all may not really know, or y'all just look at, y'all focus more on the ultimate, what the gas prices are. Like here in Georgia, in Atlanta, depending on where you are, the closer you are in the city, gas is now $2.43. If you go into the suburbs, <clears throat> in the outskirts, it could be $2.35. But one thing that we never realize is taxes are already included with the gas price. Now, some people would like to argue, and they're going to argue me down like they know, but nobody, everybody want to argue about it. It's different in each state, but it has nothing to do with what state you're in because there is an 18 point, I can't remember the exact number, is, but it's 18 point something cents that's added on to your gas for taxes. 
what Trump wanted to do. And see, this is where a lot of people kind of get, get they, they stay unwoke. They don't be woke. I hate that term. They just stay woke, you know, using a, um, something in the wrong tense. <clears throat> I stay woke, you know. They need to get off of that little stupid ghetto cliches at times, you know. Stay woke. Hmm, okay. But anyway, I'm just going to educate y'all. Now, Trump wants to add 25 cents on doors. You know, everybody wanted to get a shortcut about things. So, 25 cents in addition to the 18 cents is going to be added on to the gas prices. Now, I'm looking at Shell. It's two dollars and thirty-five cents. So, not only is it a eighteen point whatever I can't remember the number. Trump wants to add twenty-five cents plus the eighteen cents, which means you he wants to um, basically increase it by four. What is that? And that's per gallon. So, twenty-five. That means 43 cents or something, whatever the math is, they want to add on for the tax. Sorry, I've been snatching up all the hours I can. Instacart decided to stop hourly guarantee now. They have a bunch of new hires. Last day of guarantee Sunday. I I know. Ooh, don't even get on to me about no um, Instacart. I bumped into someone yet. You know, that's what... Don't even get on to me about Instacart, please. Ooh, any of these other gigs, to be honest. Um, but you have to stay aware about these policy changes because one part of it is if you add 20, 25, if Trump gets his way and you start adding 25 cents more to the gallon, who the hell is this? It's going to be a headache. It's going to not be, I didn't want to with you, Todd, if you would. These are our calls you Oh, oops, I'm trying to, ooh, me drive. I'm sitting here almost, oh, then you just called me? I'll call you back. So let me tell you, in regards to, um, uh, let me tell you in regards to <clears throat> what is going to happen with this increase if he gets his way. Not only will the rates of all these other companies, especially Uber and, and all these ride-sharing gigs, even Panera, even Panera, Panera pays $0.32 cents a mile going and coming to the store, but to add 25 cents more to the tax of the gas, in addition to the um, gas prices go up, do expect that during the summertime it's going to be $3 or more. Now, you may say, well, if you drive Uber and live, and you know during the summertime everyone drives. Lyft and Uber during the summer, especially when those, you know, people who work as teachers, administrators, off for the summer, and they need extra money to drive. Uber is not going to raise their rates to compensate for this increase. They're not. All these corporate, you know, Amazon wants to bid where they're going to put their headquarters to in, but then they want improvements in the transportation system and the roads and everything else and get these billion dollar tax breaks and write offs. Who do you think is gonna to have to pay for the shortage of these tax revenues? You know, they said, Okay, we're gonna eliminate um, we're gonna double up on the standard deduction, we're going to eliminate itemized deductions on the schedule A, you know, oh, Trump everybody's thinking and they're getting so happy about misleading information. Now let's not talk about fake news. Let's take a let's talk about fake YouTubers who make videos 
and got all these subscribers. Everybody's praising these people because they make some false acting, false information. Well, I don't know nothing about taxes, but uh, you know, you could drive an Uber and Lyft, and you drive up all these things and blah blah blah. You know, think people, think. If you think that that all these changes that's occurring, being a 1099, what the hell is going on here with these cones in the road? Oh God! You know what you think's going to happen with the um, with the changes and um, these tax so-called tax cuts that we think that we're going to be able to take advantage of next year. No. Given the rate of a new, I'm not even going to educate anything about inflation because that's a whole new topic. I'm not going to explain about what inflation, but basically inflation is is that, you know, if you pay a dollar last year on an item, the same dollar is not going to be worth the same thing next year for the same products and services. So, if we don't stay active and we don't stay aware of what's going on to change your strategies of doing these ride sharing gigs and driving and driving. You know, we are last year around this time everybody wanted to talk about I'm gonna delete Uber until they put a tip option on the app and look what happened. Do you think that they made any changes. Did you see any impact or changes on that? Some of y'all are thinking that, ooh, I made $1,500 a week. But you're driving 70, 80 hours just to make fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 a week. Driving your car down to the ground. You're thinking that, well, I only spent, I know, I could get to write off the gas on the taxes. Let me tell y'all something. If y'all think that the changes that they spoke, that he said Trump proposed and passed for next year taxes are going to be a thing, you wait until they start really changing the game, the rules of the game. The middle class and people who don't have any money, poor, working class, middle class, 1099. 1099, straight up. And when you change of the 1999 economy, you think they're going to allow all these changes and all these write-offs on a Schedule C? Nope. Because working as a 1099 independent contractor, you're not, all you're doing is being a slave to these big corporations who refuse to pay workers' comp, insurance, a actual fair wage, it makes no sense. Uber, Instacart, um, I'm not even going to make Grubhub because Grubhub is a publicly traded company. But all these companies, I find it amazing how you never could look at their, you never could look at their books. You could never look at their financial statements. See, the only reason why Grubhub, you could probably look at their financial statements, is because it's a publicly traded company. They have the answer to investors. But all the rest of them, Instacart, Grubhub, not Instacart, Ship, um, Uber for sure, Lyft, you don't see any public records. You never see what their spreadsheets are. All we know is, oh, Lyft said they lost. Um, ten million dollars, or Uber lost one billion dollars, or whatever the hell they lost. That's paper. I could simply say, when I do my tax return, I'm gonna start my return this weekend, and I and I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all live. So stay tuned. If you want to look at it, if you want to do a return, or you want to see how I do it. I'm a, come on, I ain't going to show you all my personal information, like social security numbers and things like that. So I'm going to figure out how to sanitize the screen, but it's going to be my actual numbers. Now, this this year, um, 
will be the first year that I've actually worked full-time as a 1099 self-independent contractor for tax purposes. Now, I did have a couple of W-2s when I worked at Amazon as an employee for that small period of time. And then I worked early in the year in customer service working from home for, um, for Amazon. So I do have a couple of W-2s that had taxes taken out, but it ain't going to be, a, it's not going to be enough to say I need to pay um, those amount of taxes. You know, it's not going to be enough. So basically, we need to be aware of what's going on, not so much of the tax law changes that, that's going to take effect next year but other policies as well. Now, some people think that this increase added on to the tax. I just, uh, uh, why, oops, we can't show customer. Yeah, that's true. They mark up. You're not supposed to give the receipt to the customer. Well, I think the customer knows that. I think they know. I don't know. I don't know. To me, I'm quite sure they know that. But starting next week, Amazon has decided that you may we also get groceries, shop, um, groceries, restaurants, and Amazon Prime packages as well. So I think now that Amazon is really going to crush Instacart because I went to Whole Foods the other day. Was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday I was in Whole Foods. No, not yeah, it was it? No, it was Wednesday, whatever day it was. And I saw Valentine's Day, that's what it was. And they had, um, they now have it where you could um, have your Amazon Prime packages or groceries or whatever delivered, but it didn't have Instacart on on the um, window like they had. So, you know, because we all know that Whole Food bought, Whole Food was bought out by Amazon. So it's just a nail in the coffin before that gets um, eliminated. Hold on, y'all. Let me see something, because I got an email from somebody. So, hold on a second. All right, y'all, I'm back. I had to read what that message was. It was um, the manager at Panera. She wanted to know if I could come in today. I said, I wonder what happened now. What happened now? Why why is she texting me? Why if I'm able to come in today? Better not be no crazy stuff, that's all I know. I'm not in the mood for crazy. But anyways, but that's one of the things we have to be watchful for. Or what's gonna happen if that twenty five cents tax increase on the gas gets passed? the needs for the increase because it's supposed to be um, a fund that's supposed to go towards fixing roads and bridges and the infrastructure. But to me, what does that mean for those who um, who do much gig jobs? You need a vehicle to drive the cars. You need your vehicle to do 99% of these gig jobs. But then you also need gas to run your cars. But if gas is, I'm, I, I want to know, if gas was to go up to, say, 4 or $5 a gallon, now that might be a stretch, but you know, you know, during natural disasters, you know how the gas prices tend to peak and spike, rather, during the summers. Something always happens in the summertime. 
you know, in the summer, a lot of people tend to um, ride their cars more, you know, gas prices ain't, you know, gas prices have gone down considerably to some extent. But meanwhile, you're riding on these raggedy ass roads that destroys your car, you know, nobody's fixing these roads. At least I know not here in Georgia, they're not, not in Atlanta. Time I turn around. So I almost dang ruined my tire yesterday. But I, I'm surprised this car could hold up to a lot of these um, damages that has been do, that's been occurring. You know, it's been dangerous. But I'm going to tell you, Uber, Lyft, and all the rest of them, you know, especially Uber and Lyft, they're not increasing no rates. They're not accommodating the rate changes as it relates to the prices of gas. All they want to do is give people, oh, here's a gas card. Here's a gas card. You can use it for gas. Use a gas card just to save 10 cents, 5 cents a gallon. Man, y'all people are so dumb. They'll be promoting this little gas card for gas for Uber. If you don't have money that you can't pay for gas out of your pocket or pay gas from the so-called thousands of dollars you'll make, and you're using a gas card issued by Uber, ugh. you know, people want to get these. Now, nah, that's your own money. That's your money. You can do what you want to do. But I just but don't promote things like that. I believe in financial literacy. Yeah, I have a credit card, but I'm not gonna put a. I don't use a credit. I don't use a credit card for things like gas. A gas card, really? A gas card for something that you use every day. You um, you you buy gas either once a week, twice a week, or whatever the situation is. But I'm not gonna put no put it on no credit card some Uber thinking that you got some savings going on. You know, I could say twenty five, I could say ten cents a gallon. Man, please. I could do that and um get one of those Kroger um things and go shopping with and save you know, ten cents or whatever. But I'm not gonna get no gas card. I'm not gonna get no credit card to use my gas. That's not a that is not a way to Keep track of your gas expenses because you know the 52 cents a mile that the IRS allotted when you drive, if you take the mileage, it already accounts for things like gas and mileage. I've checked, I kept track of my mileage all of last year, you know, and tomorrow or whatever day I'm going to show y'all, I'm going to figure out how to. Um, Download all of my spreadsheet on my spreadsheet when I kept track of it on my expenses, particularly the miles. And I'm going to show you the difference because I haven't spent a whole lot of money last year. I, I know exactly what I spent when I spent on tires, oil change, probably a couple car washes here and there, and anything related to the vehicle. Oh. Um, the, the monthly payments on my car note, things like that. Now, give or take a couple of hundred dollars, it was almost twenty-one thousand plus dollars with the mileage, and that's what from January all the way to December. I don't even, I'm not telling you the exact numbers because I haven't looked at the stride account, but if I was to factor in how much did I spend related to the car, the actual expense, then, you know, let me see, Uber, I'm going to read your comment, Miss G, because I'm driving so small, I can't even read it. I wish they had it where you could um, verbally tell you what people are saying, because driving and reading is not good, but I'm going I'm to respond to all your comments. When I get to Panera, 
Nancy, why the hell are they calling me Nicole? You're like, are you coming in? And blah, blah, blah. I guess something happened. Something happened yesterday where a couple of people are not coming to work. But, yeah, so let me tell you. I'm tell, I'm going tell, to tell y'all. When everybody's getting, all these companies are trying to do 1099 and trying to change people to 1099 and all this other kind of stuff, I'm telling you. They're gonna change the group. They're gonna change the um, the game. They're not gonna allow all these write-offs and all this stuff like they used to, because they need the revenue. They need to collect the taxes on the revenue. Yeah, they. I'm telling you. Oh yeah. They they. Yeah, they may have um so-called cut the tax rate. For next year, they may have doubled up on the standard deduction, but they didn't allow the itemized deduction. I'm gonna tell you, they not see. Y'all gotta understand how it works. They're gonna do one part. They're gonna do one thing at a time. They already talk another thing that that's affecting. That's in that's when the news is. They were talking about eliminating the food stamp program or the SNAP. Now I get food stamps or SNAP. Because the amount of money that I make every month, there's been no way I could afford food. So that $179 that I get a month for one person is supposed to be able to feed one person in a household every 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 month for the whole month. That's not a whole lot of money. That is not a whole lot of money. And... The other thing they was doing was cutting the food stamp program. They're talking about overhauling that, period. That's another thing. Now, I don't know how many of y'all who work as ten um, independent contractors who get SNAP or food stamps, but I'm quite sure, but you know you could get food stamps and qualify for it if you if this is your only type of job because there's no way in hell anyone could tell me that you could work Uber Eats, Grubhub, and all these gig jobs and be able to pay your basic living expenses and still buy food. And I'm not talking about buying no food stamp from nobody who got 10 kids and everything else trying to sell food stamps. Because to me, that's stupid and that's crazy. If you got $600 worth of food stamps and you turn around trying to sell it, to other people to make money, I feel that you're stealing from the government. And what the hell happened up here that bring all these fire trucks down the road? Something happened. So, um, if you got kids and, you know, and you're feeding people with food stamps and you turn around and you're trying to sell it, you know, you're taking food out of your um, children's mouths for the sake of getting cash and money. Now, I know some people say, well, you can't buy, you know, you can't buy toiletries and, and you know, toothpaste, toothbrush, and, you know, hot um, non-food items with food stamps. And you may say, well, you may need those items. That's why you're selling the food stamps. Then I could probably understand. But I could assure you, if you have children and you have food stamps, you probably have Section 8 housing, everything basically for free. Living off the government. Now, they want to turn around and eliminate those type of um, programs. Now, don't get don't get on, don't tell me, don't go on the phone, no, my phone this post about, oh, Big government and millionaire people get with them. They doing the same thing and they getting they getting the same thing and they doing it too. Blah blah blah. I don't care. We're not talking about what other people who got money, rich, wealthy people, more white people on welfare than black folks. And you know, see, black people we always and I'm speaking just to plus black folks for now because I do have subscribers who are not black and other ethnicities. 
ethnic, you know, backgrounds. But for our own, our people, for us, we need to stop and get off that what white people doing and they do the same thing too. You know, please get off that topic. Don't even, don't even bring that to, don't even talk to me about that about other people and other white people and black people. We, you know, we need more white folks in welfare and whatever, whatever, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? We need to be more aware about, um, sustaining ourselves economically. Everybody, other ethnic groups, some people from other countries come here and they start businesses. They start, you know, they have their own little small pockets of communities where they support themselves. They have their own bank. You know, they come together and they operate a business. They're not getting no government funds or anything from the government because like anybody else. They're not. You know, they're not getting anything else than people who've been born in this country is able to obtain. One thing I have to say for my my brothers and sisters from other countries and other backgrounds and other is that they truly hustled because they didn't come from a country that had a welfare system. They didn't have a welfare system. They don't have SNAP government, you know, Section 8 housing. They don't... In Venezuela, for instance, I went to Venezuela years ago on a cruise, and I went, you know, I just walked around that country, and I saw the rich of the rich and the poor of the poorest. There was no middle class. You were either rich or you were poor. They didn't... Government didn't support people. There was no government handout. They didn't give out... They didn't provide any type of government aid and services like they do in this country. So when they manage to to leave their poor country or the islands or wherever country they're from and they come here and, you know, we laugh about it. And I'm talking about black people. You know, we like to make jokes about, oh, Mexican people and 10 in the car, 4 in the room and, you know, 15 in a car, 10 in a house and thinking they poor and we thinking we supposed to be so better than other ethnic groups, we need to get off that little mindset. Black folks, we got so accustomed to want to be, um, you know, assimilated in terms of what white people are doing, you know, rather than fighting and developing our own communities and building it. And, and we worried about what white people do. Oh, white supremacy, white supremacy. Oh, right, you know, oh, white people. I don't give a damn what Trump decides to do. He told us who he was. He showed us who he was. And we, you know what they say? If somebody show you who they are, believe them. Believe it. Why are we shocked? Why are we surprised? Oh my God! And then he getting all, and then all these black, all these black politicians sitting up on their asses, ain't doing shit either. You know. That's why I went to these um, homeowner association meetings when they have um, when they have um, when they have these uh, meetings when it's time for election in DeKalb County in the District Four area and they're running for DeKalb County CEO and 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 um, and running for these offices. That's the only time they show their face, election time. Now, this is this year in Georgia, we'll be electing a new governor. And there's a couple of black folks that's on the ballot. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I don't know who they are, you know. And I'm not going to vote because they're black. I'm going to vote in terms of what you're going to, what you, what is it that you're going to do for the state of Georgia? Because I'm sick and tired of these little trifling ass you know, fake ass hair weaving, fake nail wearing, polyester suit, fake ass Christians. We want to talk about fake news. Let's talk about fake Christians. Oh, let's go and pray. Pray for yourself. You know, God gave us 
God gave us choice, gave us choice. We have, we could make our own choices. He gave our own decisions to make. My husband was born in Belgium. He had to live. Yeah, you could be. If you're gonna be a Christian, truly be a believer, not these fake Christians that people yelling and screaming, hollering and hooping and hollering, and being self righteous. That is not, you know, that's what I don't want to hear. People talk, 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 but they don't do. You know, they stay in their little bubble, and they don't go out to really help those who are truly in need. So rather than waiting for the government to do for your for do things for you, you go out in there and help someone else. You know, if they cut that food stamp program and they say, okay, you know what, we're going to eliminate it, all these churches have all these food pantries, they have clothing, they have all these things. Maybe truly you need to go back and do that. You know? Now, I'm not, now I know I've been so busy and I fell off the bandwagon and I stopped doing certain things that I was doing, you know? I went to, you know, at least, what, twice a year, I used to always help out at the church I used to go to when they had this, um, you know, putting, you know, tutoring. I was tutoring these kids on Saturdays. And then when I did that, I did that for a few months. Then the church eliminated the program. And I was like, how do I you know, eliminate the tutoring program? Because they was getting money from some organization and then they cut the funding. But I was like, okay, then they pay me to go there to tutor. And I wasn't expecting to get paid. But why would you eliminate such a program? Especially it was in a part of in, um, Stone Mountain. Kids, the reading scores, math skills was down the damn tube. I'm not teaching. I wasn't teaching kindergarten, first grade. These kids were like fourth, fourth, five, and sixth grade, but they did not have a skill level of the school of the um, grade level they were in. I was like, what the world? Before a child gets to kindergarten, they should already know how to do their ABCs and what and know their numbers. Before they get to kindergarten, before you go to school, you're supposed to already know those two basic things. ABCs and one, two, threes. And maybe some colors. Before you get to kindergarten. Not when you get to the first grade, you're supposed to be learning, a child will be learning how to read, or, or at least do their numbers. Unless I'm wrong. Unless tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. If a, when a child gets to kindergarten, what are they supposed to have learned? I'm not talking about reading at a fifth grade level. Now, there's some children, they could read. They'll be in the first grade, and they're at a, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade level. I know when I was in elementary school, we had those tests. I was, uh, my math skills was at a 12th grade level. And I was in the sixth grade. That's how, you know, that's how good I was mathematically. I tested very well. You going to work now? Okay, Seattle. Give me, go back and check your email. Let me know if you got my email. And then we could talk. But you have a good day at work. But I'm, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all. Stay aware of what's going on politically, especially this year, because I'm going to tell you, before the midterm election in November, that dang Trump and the Congress, they're going to cut all those um, social those social programs, and they're going to eliminate anything that pertains to middle class workers, especially 1099 gig economy jobs. 
If you think they're going to allow people to write off all that income every single year with a ride-sharing gig economy and the prices of gas go up to $3 and some change, and if you think that that's going to continue, you're not your own business. I'm sorry. Working as a 1099 gig economy, as 1099, you're not, that's not your own job. Exactly. Instead of buying Jordans, get your business license. <laughs> you said Uber is for illegals and those coming from South America is a joke. Uh, hmm. See, Miss G, that's what I'm saying. You got to start your own thing. You got to start your own thing. One thing I've learned about doing these jobs, Uber and Lyft and all these companies, is that I found a niche. I found my purpose. Now, I'm not going to go over it too much because I've helped quite a few of y'all and businesses all right I'm seem to be in a dead spot but like I said please be aware especially this year of what's going on. I'm telling you. Another thing that's going to be that we need to be more aware of, let me see. They right? talk about the food stamp changes, the 25 cent gas, but um, 25 cents increase in tax on gas. What else is going to be another thing that's going to be? Um... Oh, let me tell you another thing. You know that killer who shot up all those pure children? and um, administrators at the school up there in South Florida. You know, when I was, when they was going over the timeline of this killer, they said that he took an Uber to the school. And when I heard that, I said, wait the hell? He called Uber to drop him off at the school and did that. And then immediately I started saying to myself, you know, and remember the other person who ran off all those people in New York, he was in an Uber car taking Uber. Now, I'm quite sure there was a whole lot of people who've been taking Uber to mass murder people. And the first thing I started saying to myself, you know what? See, that's why I kind of stopped driving people driving people around because I had this one guy strange white guy his name was Adam I'll never forget he had a beard he always um and I know I made this video last year about this strange guy he, he will you're always picking him up at different places like you never picking him up at um at the same place so I remember taking picking him up one place was at an apartment complex somewhere and I was like this is kind of strange not to be living over here and I'm not saying you know that people can't live they don't live in certain places but it just it, it just had these big ass headsets on his ears and then he'll sit right behind me good morning Lynn and he sat right behind me and he wouldn't say nothing. He just, just, just stared dead in your face. I'll be looking in my rear view mirror. He's staring down at me. I'm looking like, what the hell's wrong with this dang crazy fool? Then I dropped him off. Wherever. Then the next time I drove Uber, I picked the same guy up again at a different location somewhere. 
same thing. He walked in the car, had the big ear, ear set, ear headphones. I took him to a school. And, okay, why this thing on it is not... Shut up. Stop blowing your fucking horn. Shit. You see the dang red light thing on? So anyway, so I picked up this fool again in a different, um, on a whole new different date. Dropped him off at a school. I'm like, where the hell he going? It was about one something in the afternoon. I was dropping him off at school. At, he had this big ass, big backpack on, backpack. And I was like, there's something wrong about this, something strange about this dude. And I was like, mm-mm. See, I'm a, see, I ain't trying to say that he would have done something crazy. But, see, sometimes it makes me wonder that Uber needs to start doing background checks on some of these passages. Because when I heard that they had, this guy took an Uber to the school when he shot up those poor kids and the teachers, You have to always go by your instinct sometimes. Now, I haven't heard anything further about, you know, maybe the Uber driver say, oh, yes, I picked him up, and maybe they interviewed him on the news, or maybe, you know, maybe nobody chose to contact the Uber driver to get any kind of updates or scoop about him. But I'm quite sure the FBI will um, will contact Uber and see who picked that guy up if the Uber driver didn't already go to the FBI to give their story about if they noticed anything different about them. But at this point, they probably won't do anything. But immediately when I heard the timeline that he took an Uber to the school, see, I'm not saying that if the guy didn't take an Uber, wouldn't have done that. But to me, I think if I was the Uber driver and I was picking somebody up and say, you know, he was 19 years old and I'm picking someone up to drop them off at a school and it's two something in the afternoon, I would have been like, where are you going? And school's over, you know, it's not like you're picking up a parent and they're picking up a, they're picking up a, um, you know, they take an Uber so they could go to the school and pick the child up. Because 99% of the time, the child would get on the school bus. I don't say anything about him. Yeah. Now, she wouldn't have known nothing about him. But what I'm saying is, is that when they said on the timeline that he took an Uber to school, to the school, I would have been like... If I was the Uber driver, and I said, "Oh my God," the most, the first thing I would have, would have, would have came to my mind was, "Oh my God," I went dropped off that guy at the school. They would have known, because you wouldn't know if you went to the school, if you were in a certain camp, you know, you say, "Oh my God," I dropped off that guy at the school, because you know you dropped someone off at school. They would have been like, it would have been something. It would have snapped. Whoever that Uber driver was that dropped them, they would have been like, oh, my God, they had a killer in the car. That person's probably shooken up. That probably that person's probably like, you know, ain't no telling what they think in their mind. I mean, I know that if I had um, picked them up and dropped them off and later on in the news, they said the person took an Uber to the school my first thought in my mind would have been, oh, my goodness, that person was in my car. And I probably would have been shaken up. To me, I would have been so, yeah, I would feel, I would feel, I would feel so bad, too. But, see, I would feel more, I would feel a lot of anxiety if I knew that something like that happened. You know, because, like I tell you, When that guy came into the car, and I picked him up like two different occasions throughout Atlanta, 
And then, you know, he looks weird to me. And I remember dropping him off out of school at two something in the afternoon. And he had this big ass backpack. I'm like, what are you going to do? You know, it wasn't like he was going, you know, I don't know. I I mean, you just, you just don't know what you when, when what happens when you drop someone off and you, you know, you don't know. It's hard to say. You really don't know. You re, I, I mean, it's it's, too, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what the situation is. It's hard to say what would you do in that case or what would you do in that scenario. But the point that I'm making is this, is that maybe Uber needs to end Lyft. Maybe they need to start scanning these customers. You know, because, see, there's a lot of cases that happen where people will even, even food delivery. You know, a few months ago, they said this girl dropped off food at a grub hub somewhere in Chicago. And when she got there to give the food, the brother, sister, they had ended up trying to rob her. Cut her face and something, cut her hand to escape. You know? All kind of crazy stuff. My father used to be a taxi cab driver in New York for years before he passed away. And I'm not talking about those black gypsy cabs because that's, you know, because that's another video altogether. That's what I think what these Uber things are, gypsy cabs. You know, you don't know when someone gets in your car. You don't know what they're going to do. I've heard people gotten robbed in Atlanta. Up off them for Uber. People got assaulted, you know, verbally assaulted, got, you know, physically assaulted in the car. What Uber gonna do? We they gonna come and send a little canned statement. Um we we apologize. No, they're not even gonna say what are they gonna say what Uber gonna say? Um we take safety issues seriously with Uber. Oh, damn it. Fucking damn. What are they going to say? They're going to say something like, um, we're going to look into this matter, and we're going to take this, and we're going to investigate the situation. They're not going to say they apologize. They're never going to admit they're wrong. And, you know, they're going to say, we're going to look into this matter, and we take every case seriously. And we'll get back with you. You know? Some bullshit stuff Uber going to tell people. You know? And in Lyft 2. They in, that, they in that category too. You know? They don't give a damn. They're not raising no rates. All they're going to do is get that little corporate tax break and probably continue to have those accounts, offshore accounts set up and not pay corporate income taxes. That's what they're going to be doing. They're not going to worry. They ain't going to care. It ain't going to bother them And one, one bit. One bit. Just like this Panera, you know, if you think that I'm going to be bullied from the Russian shift leader from hell and you think you're going to point, she better not be there today to point no finger in my face because I'm telling you something must have happened yesterday for them to text me about if I'm working today. Something happened. I'm going to find out when I get there in the next two minutes, right up, I'm right up the street Something happened yesterday. Some who see who figure who didn't come to work. Somebody didn't come to work. Asking me if you coming in today. You better talk with me with some respect, because you're not gonna be pointing your finger and you ain't gonna tell me nothing. All I'm supposed to do is come in, pick up the food, drop it off to these businesses nearby, and that's it, and go home. 
I'm not going to be micromanaged. I'm not going to be, you can't be standing around. You need to, you know, go and clean some tables. No, you're not going to talk to me like that. You're going to ask me. Now, hopefully, Nicole, this black girl, hopefully she's working. Because I can't deal with the Russian from hell. I'm not going to sit here and deal with it. Not today. Because yesterday I went on an interview with this um, cellular sales company. And then I found out it was, like, strictly commissioned and... I'm supposed to take this online testing today, so sometimes this week, but I don't know. They talking about you can make four thousand a month, and it's um, and and get work on a draw. So I don't know. Like I said, I'm not. I'm. My goal is not to stay here at Panera, being a delivery driver. Now I may do um. They do have some other positions that they're looking for, so I'm going to apply, not just working as a delivery driver. So, what? I don't see nobody else here. No other drivers. Where they cars at? You know what? I ain't stressing myself out over no dang manager from Panera. Because you're not going to talk to me crazy. That's all I know. So, for their sake, let them talk to me crazy. Let that Russian from hell talk to me crazy today. And I ain't dealing with no foolishness with these... um, I ain't dealing with the foolishness today. Not today. All right, y'all. I'm here. Let me go on to work. Y'all have a good one. I'll talk to y'all later. See y'all.